we're going to begin lesson nine with some repeated concepts. We're going to play a chord progression you've already seen before with a split hand exercise you've already seen before. This again is great roll preparation because it gets you playing different notes at a faster stroke with some independence and it's really good to practice this slow and move up to the highest tempo on the progress chart because it's really preparing you to play a future roll or a future chorale. This is what the first four bars of this look like. Again, these concepts are not new. You've done this before. We're just putting it into a new kind of combination that helps prepare you for future literature. This next exercise is the same thing. You've seen this progression before. It's the exercise where we worked on root position, first inversion chords back to root position, and second inversion chords. So you need to jump from one chord to the other, but instead of playing unison double verticals, you're now going to split it between the hands. This is what the first four bars of this exercise looks like. The one difference when you split hands in this exercise is that one hand has to prepare the next chord before the other one is finished. Previously, when both hands were in unison, they moved at the same time to prepare the next chord. Now, your left hand will finish slightly ahead of your right hand, and it needs to begin preparing the next note before your right hand. This is going to require a little bit of independence, but it's necessary in order to ensure your accuracy. Here's what this looks like between the first two chords. When you play this exercise at a faster tempo, you may not notice that exaggerated of a motion when it comes to preparing the next note. However, accuracy issues in the future can be directly related to understanding this preparation concept. If you are not preparing the next notes you play, you are much more likely to be inaccurate. So it's really important that you understand this concept now. It does require a little bit of jumping around the keyboard and some independence, but it's really important that you understand the whole concept. I want you to start at the slowest tempo when you do both of these exercises. It's also really beneficial, once you feel comfortable starting with the left hand, to start with the right hand. Sometimes when we play our chorales in the future, we begin with the right hand if the melody line happens to be in the right hand. So, just like you played your scale exercises starting with mallet 3 and mallet 2, you need to practice your chord and roll development exercises starting with the left hand and starting with the right hand. You never know when you're going to need that technique. 